Web3 offers endless opportunities to bridge the physical and digital worlds together. Lucas Furch is the founder of House of Muse. I'm actually sitting in the House of Muse in New York City right now, which is a membership club with a Web3 basis, but a very, very high-end real-world feel. What they're building is extremely exciting. He'll tell you about all of it right now. That's dope. So we're sitting in a gorgeous five-story building in Soho, New York City. House of Muse this is a pop-up shop. We've got a swimming pool, art everywhere, a really creepy basement, as you told me about. <laughs> what are we doing here, and, and what are you building here? So this is a, uh, a pop-up that we're doing. Uh, House of Muse is a Web3 uh, private member club that's going to launch in no uh, Soho in New York uh, next year. And uh, I really wanted to show the community uh, that we're building uh, a representation of what it's going to be like when we open next year. Um, we've been working on this uh, for a little while now, starting to get the community members to come together. And I figured Mainnet was on. And it was a great chance to show people the kind of uh, experiences we want to put together in an amazing space with amazing people coming through on a daily basis. You talked about the community coming together. How do you build a community like that? Because it doesn't come from nowhere, obviously. So I, I don't come from a long time in Web3 at all. I'm, I'm very, very new into this. Uh, I had a chance meeting with uh, Kane Warwick from Synthetics uh, in November of last year. <coughs> he um, has mentored me through this whole process and, uh, and helped me learn about everything that I know. Uh, going to conferences with him and to events with him, uh, I realized that this Web3 space is phenomenal and that the technology behind it is you know, changing the fiber of our future but the people in the community are, are quite insular and, and very sort of shy. I'm the polar opposite. I talk too much. I uh, love networking. Uh, so I said to Kane, I was like, well, why don't we create a space that brings these people together and I can leverage my skill set, which is networking and community building, to help them come together and meet each other. And that's what the House of Muse is meant to embody. Uh, so we're calling it a co-networking space, a space where you can come and get some work done but I'll have membership managers that'll float around and bring those, uh, bring the members together within the community. You somewhat described it as a mix between the Soho House, which a lot of people may not know what it is who are watching, but Soho House and WeWork. Exactly, yeah. So I don't want to have any offices in the space. I think uh, WeWork can handle that side of it. And I don't want it to be as raucous as uh, Soho House can get. Uh, I really want it to be a space that uh, can nurture collaboration. Uh, and we'll do a lot of stuff to facilitate that, uh, having different people coming in and, uh, and doing presentations. We'll have a permanent podcast studio in there so we can have people coming through. Uh, I'd like to have a small recording studio in there so we can have musicians that can come in and then collaborate on you know, Web3 uh, music projects. I, I just think there's such an opportunity to, to bridge that physical and digital coming together. And I think that's what's really necessary in the, uh, in the Web3 space and, and definitely in the NFT space uh, to take us outside of this, you know, an NFT is a piece of digital art. Right. And when you describe it as a Web3, you know, cl club, Web3, Web what does that really mean? Does that mean that everybody who is a member is working on something in Web3? Does it mean that you have an NFT that's your membership card? What are the different aspects of it that make it sort of Web3 as opposed to just a social club? So uh, membership applications will open December, January, uh, and then be ongoing. <clears throat> we'll go through a membership process where uh, when you're applying, it's going to be quite a rigorous uh, process to fill out. I want to make sure that we're really understanding who you are as a human. And no, you don't just need to be web through. We'll allow anyone to, to make applications, but that we definitely want people that are at least crypto curious uh, to be coming into the club. Uh, the membership committee will then vote. Uh, I'm very lucky to have a, a pool of advisors or mentors, I guess I call them, like G Money and Jameis from Pleaser and, and Kane from Synthetics who will sit on that committee to help us make the decisions on who the right people are that, that join that, uh, join that community. The membership will be an NFT. Uh, so once you've, uh, been approved, uh, you'll get an empty shell of an NFT that has four tiers of utilities coded into it. I've never wanted to do a project where I don't deliver something straight away. If someone gives me money, I want to give them something back and not say, hey, we're going to do this in some time in the future. So in March, we'll drop uh, the first NFTs for the members that have been approved, which will be access to a digital house of Muse, sort of a precursor towards the first house opening in July and August. And that'll allow you to communicate with other members. Uh, it'll have uh, VIP event invites to both Web3 and music and fashion uh, events. 
Then when we opened up the physical club, there'll be three more tiers of utilities you can unlock by loading and staking uh, our token into the NFT. Uh, access for you, access for you plus two friends, access for you plus four friends. So the higher the tiers go, the more uh, monetary value will be assigned to, to that membership tier. When you say there'll be this community when the NFT drops, is that going to be a metaverse of sorts? Or is it more like a Discord server? No, so uh, we're going to be a little bit traditional and it'll be a mobile app that'll connect people. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be different channels outside of that that we work with as well, but uh, I kind of like having something physical in your hand. And uh, we're very good at building apps. Uh, my co-founder is a phenomenal uh, developer, uh, has built everything we've done so far. We've actually already launched a project called Social Muse, uh, which is a Web3 iteration of an old uh, influencer platform that I had called Into. So we have 30,000 influencers that use a mobile app to connect with localized content creation opportunities. Uh, and now with it being called Social Muse, we reward them with crypto for the content that they create. Uh, so we know how to do that. We know how to build products. We know how to deploy products. I know how to build communities. I'm zero technical. Uh, but I'm really excited about this journey. I think that everyone that's come through this house over the last four days that's met me and that's experienced the space and has seen what this vision is all about absolutely agrees that having physical spaces for people in the community to come together and collaborate is, is really necessary. Yeah, I agree. And you touched a bit on your background, obviously, the social platform that you founded previously. What else were you doing before this that kind of inspired this idea? So I uh, spun up a COVID business in London during the pandemic and opened up 15 COVID testing centers. Uh, I sold out my share in the business to my co-founder November last year and had zero intention of uh, being a founder again. <laughs> Uh, and I don't regret it at all. I love every minute of what I'm doing. Uh, but it was that chance meeting with Kane that got me uh, to where I am now with what I'm doing. Uh, he introduced me to the world of Web3 and I thought I'd be an absolute fool if I didn't uh, take a chance with this. It's such an interesting industry and there are so many incredible minds. Uh, but like I said, a lot of them are quite shy and they don't come out of their shells too much. And I'm the absolute opposite. So I'm hoping my crazy personality helps uh, change it a bit. So obviously you've talked about what it will be like when it first opens, sort of the ge general concept. If it came to fruition, your greatest dream about what it could be, is this in every city in the world, every major city in the world, what utility can we add to the NFTs? What will you be doing with it if it really fulfills so the, the vision is already in place. Uh, what I'd really like to do, uh, so after we open up the digital and then the physical, uh, we're going to open up uh, a major Series A round, going to look to raise 100 to 200 million, and then be able to go out and buy A-grade real estates uh, in great cities in the world that the community will vote on where they want the next club to be. We've already started having conversations with people that are already in our community, uh, so I'm guessing the next one's going to be Miami, uh, seeing as it's you know crypto hotspot. Crypto spot. Capital, the, uh, capital uh, is the But there's a lot of interest for London, there's a lot of interest for Lisbon, but the next sites that we're going to uh, move into won't just be a member club, we'll have boutique hotel rooms and wellness as well. And I'd like to start seeing the spaces then being used as destinations for offsites for, uh, for crypto companies as well, to be able to say, hey, we want to take our team to House of News Lisbon, and there'll be a 50-room hotel plus the member club, event space, and, and wellness in there as well. So creating destinations for people to go to, but always in mind of the community saying, this is where we would like the next House of News to be. Because if I had my way, I'd put it in Tuscany and be on a vineyard somewhere and, <laughs> and relax. Sure. <laughs> sure, but it's hard to get people, uh, everybody else out to, out to Tuscany when they're already traveling all around the world to these uh, destinations that you talked about. And, you know, obviously I know the Soho House model. Uh, you have a membership to your local club or you can pay more for a membership to the clubs worldwide. Is it going to mimic that model or will your NFT be your entry into every house of Muse everywhere in the world? So there'll only ever be 2,000 uh, OG NFTs, uh, which will give you full worldwide access. Uh, if anyone chooses to leave the club, uh, they'll burn their NFT and release the tokens back into supply. So the membership fee that oh, you so pay... Oh, okay, you can't transfer the... Right, you can't transfer the membership because you're heavily vetted. Exactly, but you can release the tokens back into supply so you have a monetary position that comes back to you then and then one more NFT is available for the next person in line who'd been pre-approved. But I'm conscious of the fact that the more clubs we open up, we need to have people coming through the doors. So anyone that's been pre-approved, but there's not none of the OG NFTs available at that stage, will then start selling uh, one-year access passes to come in, which uh, would be required to be uh, re-upped every year. But the OG NFT is lifetime access, uh, and it has a value that can then be on-sold by releasing the tokens back into supply. So that motivates people to be a part of the re really from the very beginning of the genesis of it, exactly. to be there for the first mint. Do you have any concept of what it's going to cost initially? 
Yeah, so I, I don't want to make it cheap. I want to make it uh, at a point where people understand the value that's associated to it. Uh, so digital house of news access will probably sit around sort of 1500 US dollars worth of our tokens. Uh, the first access of uh, physical club just for you will be probably around 15,000 to 20,000. You plus two friends will probably be about 50 to 60,000. And then the top tier one will be sort of north of 100,000. Is that lifetime or yearly? Lifetime. Oh. And once again, if you choose to leave, you burn your NFT, the tokens that were staked into it are then released out, so you will... So your membership has, val has exactly. a literal monetary exactly. value. Yeah. And so is, is that really the motivation for tokenizing it? I mean, is that, you know, why does it need a token, I guess, is the classic question in, in crypto. Exactly. And look, there's plenty of uh, reasons why it wouldn't need a token. But I feel like if I want to have credibility and I want to be part of the Web3 community and I want to bring the Web3 community together, utilizing Web3 technology within the club uh, through the NFT for membership and through other mechanisms that we'll have within the club was important to have it as part of it. But more than anything, I know that I'm good at pulling people together and having a great time. Uh, I want House of Muse to be all about that. I've been to so many crypto events and conferences and sadly they're just stale and they're so momentary. You meet someone and you have this connection and you go straight online and you never see that person again or maybe six months later another conference. It needs to change. People need to have more meaningful connections that are ongoing in a physical space because there's something about human element and touch that is to me ultimately important to life and I think that's the one key thing that's missing from, from the, the Web3 crypto space that will help us grow. I agree. One of the most compelling narratives that we have for NFTs and Web3 is actually what you're doing, which is bridging the digital and the physical. Anyone who walked around this space over the last uh, few days would notice the presence of physical art yeah. everywhere. So talk about the bridge there between the digital art and the physical art in the space and how artists will be able to utilize it. Yeah, so I want House of Muse also to be a gallery space. I love art, uh, and the artist that's uh, in here is a, is a very dear old friend of mine. Uh, he's been, for the last year or so, on my back wanting me to help him look at doing an NFT project, and he came up with lots of really bad ideas. Uh, <laughs> and then finally I was like, hey, I'm doing this house. Why don't you paint a giant mural in the house while we're here, and we'll offer people the chance to buy an NFT of the mural. Uh, so loads of complications, which I feel like is the perfect narrative for physical meets digital. It's going to be complicated to make this happen. And just doing this art project was complex as anything. First of all, the canvases didn't fit through the door, so we had to hoist them up the front of the building. They had to take out a window to get it in. Then he started painting, and we had all these complications with everything. So it's been wildly complicated. But the end result is a beautiful, massive piece of art that's going to get donated to a major uh, modern art museum. Uh, so if you buy the NFT, you'll be able to own a digital piece of a physical piece of art that's hanging in a major modern art museum in the world. So a real beautiful representation. Uh, we're going to do some fun utility stuff where if you buy X amount of pieces, you'll be able to meet the artist. If you buy even more, you'll be able to get a print of the work. So encouraging people to have more ownership. So you're fractionalizing this physical piece of art that he's been doing live over the period of exactly. the House of Muse being here. Yeah, so we were open during Fashion Week as well. Uh, so we did a pop-up and had a little model lounge in here for, uh, for five days. So it was really interesting to see people from that other world, right? The world of fashion and models coming through here. And they were in love with the concept of seeing an artist paint. Because it's not something many people get to experience, right? They see final pieces of art, but they don't ever really see the process. Uh, I've seen the process a few times and I love Robin to death. I will never do another project with him. I love him as a friend, but uh, working with artists is, is definitely a, uh, a strenuous activity. Yeah, when you tell an artist that they need to paint at 6 p.m. on a Thursday <laughs> they're, and they're not in the mood, it's obviously not going to happen. I'm assuming that's to some degree what you're describing. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's an accurate stigma probably for every artist that I've ever known. So you're basically fractionalizing this piece and you're down to a thousand, which is really an interesting concept and one that we've seen across. And now you talk about having Fashion Week here and models and doing a lounge. Were they also interested in the Web3 side of it or were they just interested in seeing this guy paint this amazing? The response from our influencer community has blown me away. I thought they would be interested in the, uh, in, like, the Web3 space. Uh, we have really great relationships with the major uh, modeling agencies in New York, so I invited them to come down to the space. And these agency owners were grilling me on how they could integrate like blockchain technology into the talent space for you know smart contracts to secure the jobs that they do with Gucci, Balenciaga, whoever it might be. So I think there's a huge opportunity in that talent space to bring blockchain technology in. Uh, I have enough on my plate to, to not try and do that, but I'm sure there's, there's some smart people out there, and if there's anyone listening 
by all means, reach out. Happy to help make introductions to those agencies. But yeah, then the models would come through, and we've already experienced this in some other events that we did. They love this whole Web3 space. They love NFTs. They love the idea of what's going on in this world. And they love being pioneers uh, on social influencer platforms. So I definitely think there's a huge scope for us to bring that influencer community into the uh, the house of Muse. And they'll be able to as well. Anyone that uses Social Muse has a dynamic NFT. The more they use my Social Muse app, uh, they build up the value of the dynamic NFT, which will allow them access for one day or one week into the house of Muse. But they'll get a chance to hang out with like G Money or whoever's going to be in there at the time and uh, get to know them. So if you had to give it a ranking one to 10, what are my chances of membership? <laughs> well, it comes down to the committee. But uh, I don't know, from the short time we've spent together, you seem fun. You seem like you are. Uh, Can I get a six? <laughs> I'm going to go 7.5. I'll take it, man. Thank <laughs> you so much. We appreciate you. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Everything you're building. Glad you came down.